We are going to proceed now with the demo for the separation of this binary mixture. A binary mixture, as we remember, is containing two components which need to be identified for an effective separation. We are essentially going to focus on a chemical separation where we are going to be using a chemical reagent to separate the two components. <clears throat> Let us, in the scheme of things, the first test is for an acid. Uh, acid is detected in the presence of sodium bicarbonate. So let's add sodium bicarbonate to this and check for effervescence. I have sodium bicarbonate over here, so let's check for effervescence. As you can see, we are getting brisk effervescence, okay, clearly indicating that an acid is present. So we'll just let for, wait for that uh, effervescence to subside and add sufficient bicarbonate to dissolve all the acid. Now this is important because we want to separate out component A which is our acid completely from the other component. Otherwise it will interfere in the test later. Hence we must ensure that the entire component of acid is dissolved completely. <clears throat> so let's shake it vigorously and then proceed to filter. We add a little more bicarbonate because we are still seeing effervescence indicating that an acid is still present. Let us now filter this. We will check the filtrate for the presence of an acid by re-precipitation. Re-precipitation will be checked for by the addition of concentrated HCl. Let's add concentrated HCl to this, drop by drop. As you can see, we have got a distinct white solid indicating that the presence of a water insoluble acid. Now that we have confirmed the presence of an acid, let's check for the second component. We have the residue over here, right? And but we need to ensure that there is no presence of an acid in this because the presence of an acid in this would interfere with the future test. So we, how would we ensure that? That would be by adding a little more of bicarbonate. Okay, we call it washing with bicarbonate. So let's wash this with bicarbonate to remove any traces of acid that may be present. As you can see, that's the residue which would be cont containing our component B. One more small washing with bicarbonate to remove any residual acid. And then we will wash with water. This is to be remembered that we always will wash with water before every succeeding step to remove any reagent of the earlier step which may be present. So let's wash with water now, small quantities of water. It will also help in helping us transfer this residue. The water will ensure removal of any bicarbonate that may have remained in this.
this last one washing let's give to ensure the transference of the entire residue and removal of any traces of bicarbonate which may be there as you can see we have got a distinct yellow colored residue the presence of a yellow residue or a yellow colored compound or a green colored compound is normally indicative of the presence of nitrogen so when we are doing the Lassagne's test, we need to be particularly careful and check for the presence of nitrogen. Now that we have this washed residue, which is free of our acid and also free of whatever reagents we had used in the earlier step. And we will now proceed to check for the presence of a phenol. So let's transfer this residue to check for a phenol. Now normally we would have just opened the filter paper and collected the residue. But it is important that you know a simple way of doing it would be just make a hole in the filter paper and pour the reagent. The reagent for the phenol that has to be used is sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. Okay so let's add sodium hydroxide to this. As you can see, all the residue is coming down. It makes transference that much more easier by this method. Particularly when we are working with small quantities, as is, our, as is expected in our practical, to work on a micro scale. The residue has come down. Now let us shake it vigorously. Vigorously to check for whether it has dissolved. Yeah. Now let me filter this. And check the filtrate for reprate for reprecipitation. We'll just wait for the filtrate to come down. This is now the residue after filtration. Okay, we have uh, done the washing after the test of phenol. Let us now check for the presence of a base. <clears throat> so for the base, we need to use 1 is to 1 HCl, which we will prepare. We will take a small quantity of water in a test tube and to this we will add the acid. This is to be very particularly remembered that whenever you are diluting an acid, you will always take the water and add the acid to it dropwise because the reaction is very exothermic and in case you do it the reverse, the acid may boil out and you may get burnt. So please be very careful about this. Always you will take water and to that you will add the acid. So now that we have prepared our 1 is to 1 HCl, we will now proceed to test this component whether it is a base. So we will again do the same thing. We will make a small hole with a capillary. Small hole with a capillary. Please take a sealed capillary a fresh one for every test so that there is no contamination and now we will add our 1 is to 1 HCl as you can see the residue is all coming down it just flows down with the reagent We will shake it very properly and check for re-precipitation.
the reagent for reprecipitation for a base is sodium hydroxide. So let's use sodium hydroxide to check for reprecipitation. As you can see, we are getting a distinct yellow colored compound indicating the presence of a base. Hence, our component B is a base. So today's mixture type is a water insoluble acid which will be component A as it was detected first in the series of reactions and our component B is water insoluble base. We will now proceed for separation of the mixture. To better understand the technique of separation for this mixture, please see the live demo in video 3. Remember to subscribe to my channel, Dr. J's Chem Hub.